when a rubber piece is pressed against the rim, is pressed against the rim, exerting radially inward force of 15 newtons. What happens? The disc stops in 10 seconds. This is a way to stop a rotating disc. If you have a disc rotating, what do you do? I mean, if, if there's no harm putting your hand, you can just put your hand. And by putting your hand, the friction with your hand will stop it. If the disc is sharp or so, and you're, it could hurt you, you just put a piece of, you put a rag or, or some piece in contact with the rotating disc. And that provides friction. Of course, if you, you press, that gives friction, and the friction will stop the rotation. So the question is, what is the coefficient of friction between the disc and the rubber? So this is rotating this way. This means that there's a, a force of friction which is it's rotating this way. It's op friction is opposite to motion. So the motion is like that, up. So the force of friction is down. This is a force of kinetic friction, Fk. Now, I want the coefficient of kinetic friction. The force of friction, of course, there's, there's a normal force times Fk is mu times the normal force, Fn. The normal force, since I'm putting 50 newtons, pushing 50 newtons inward, so what's the normal force? 50 newtons. So the normal force is 50 newtons. And mu is my unknown. So if I find Fk, I find mu. Now how do you find Fk? We're given also some information that the disk stops in 10 seconds. So we know its initial Omega. We know omega zero is 10 radians per second. And we know that omega final is zero. And we know that the time it takes to stop is 10 seconds. And so in 10 seconds, it goes from 10 radians per second to zero radians per second. So what is the angular acceleration alpha? We have omega is omega zero plus alpha t. Omega the final omega is zero. Omega zero is 10 radians per second, plus alpha t. t is 10 seconds. So this means that alpha is minus one radian per second square. So it's one radian per second square. Just the minus means simply that it's, it's negative acceleration, because it's, it's slowing down now. It's, it slows down to, to a stop. So we have alpha. It's one radian per second square. Okay. Now alpha, whenever we have alpha, it means we have a torque. Because it's a torque that produces alpha. So if torque equals I alpha. Where is the torque? The torque is applied by the force of friction. Force of friction acts at a distance r. The perpendicular distance is r. r is a perpendicular distance. So the torque is the force of friction times the radius. This is equal to i for the disk is half m r square. And alpha is the angular acceleration, which is 1 radian per second square. We just take the magnitude, because this is here we're just looking at the magnitude of the torque. We're not looking at whether it's positive, negative, direct. We're just taking the magnitude of the torque. It's just the magnitude of I alpha. Because the torque also is negative. See, the torque is, it's, 
it tries the FK tries to produce this is rotating counterclockwise, but the torque tries to produce what clockwise rotation. This FK tries to produce clockwise rotation. So it's negative. So both the torque is negative and alpha is negative. But if we just take the magnitudes, we can just keep everything positive. It's the same thing. We can put negative, negative for both, or just put them positive. So FKR is that, I alpha. So this means that FK is half MR. And this is mu times 50 Newton. Times 50. Mu times 50. So mu is half, m is 50, and r is 1 divided by 50. So half 50 over 50 is just half. So mu is 1 half. The coefficient of kinetic friction, mu k, is 1 half. That's the coefficient of kinetic friction. And I thank you for watching and listening. <laughs>